Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is uh, lecture 13 on control system engineering one. We were discussing chapter five, reduction of multiple subsystems. So uh, there is two method uh, to broad topic to be discussed in this uh, chapter. One is block diagram reduction. The other one is uh, signal program. So we started the block diagram reduction in the last class. Uh, we have to continue from there. Actually, we derived the, the fundamental three rules, uh, the cascade one, you know, familiar form, the cascade one, then we had parallel form, then we had feedback one. And uh, today uh, we'll start with a few examples. Then we'll try to take help of the some other book uh, to uh, get acquainted with few other additional rules that may help us to understand this block, block diagram uh, reduction procedure more clearly uh, in more detail as well. So let us begin with uh, wherever we left off in the last class. So basically, we have to reduce one block diagram. Uh, this is uh, example, we, we are going to start with example 5.2, example 5.2. Okay, so let's uh, draw the diagram first, then let's uh, see uh, to figure out whether there is any familiar form or if it is not there, then how can we bring the a familiar form. Uh, so this is what we have to see. So say this is uh, the system that has been given to us. This is uh, G1. So one thing, uh, ideally we should have uh, written G1S. So we are just omitting this uh, S portion for simplicity. So keep it uh, at the final equation. If we just write S, then uh, this should be okay. Okay. So. We'll start writing only the names, not the uh, function of S. So that, that is we're just trying to avoid because we have to write uh, so many diagrams. So it, it, it will be complicated if we do that. So we have something like this as a transfer function G2. S is inherently uh, assuming that this is already there. So then you have uh, G3. Okay, then you have CS. Uh, so the last one and the first one can be given. Uh, rest of them can be iterable. So uh, our next thing is uh, say this is what has been provided. H3. H is in generally used for feedback. So in this particular book, so it's in some other book, they can have different notation. But in this book, uh, they are assuming as H for the feedback. So this is what we have. So uh, one thing we have to be careful is in the arrows as well as uh, the sign plus minus. So this thing we have to be careful. And also you have to keep in mind that uh, we always, the signal is always following the arrow. Okay, so these are the minimum requirement. So S thing we drop, but the arrow and the uh, sign we have to be careful about. So this is what is the system look like. So obviously, don't forget the arrows. So we have a plus here, minus here. We have plus here, minus here. We have plus, plus, minus. <laughs> okay, so this is the system that has been provided to us. So now, uh, first of all, let us look uh, whether uh, there is uh, any familiar form available or not. Okay, so uh, one thing uh, is available straight away that you can see. Now, in the last class, we actually have shown you that uh, the summing junction can be added together. Similarly, they can be separated together as well. So we, uh, this one can be written as something like this. So one sum junction here, then other sum junction here. 
So you have G2, uh, sorry, G3, and you have uh, H3. Okay, so then you have C of this. Then one of them is coming, uh, and then you have G2. Uh, okay, so that can be going here as a plus, and as well as from the other branch coming from here. So this is also plus. So we can actually make it separate, but you have to be careful about the sign. Okay, so the sign here was negative, and the other two here was uh, positive. So this is can be done just like the last class. We merge uh, two summation or three summation together, so we can actually separate them as well. Okay. And then uh, we have uh, other summation here. Another one is coming H two. Uh, okay, and as well as H one and G one. Okay, so this is uh, for another summation. So your RS uh, sign, careful, L, careful. So we have to keep in mind those things, so minus, and then we have each one. So now uh, let us try to see the familiar forms. So what are the familiar forms available? So we have to look at that. So definitely we can see that the last block, actually, uh, the last block here, uh, is a feedback form. So this is feedback. Feedback. So you actually have to apply the feedback. You can apply the feedback formula to reduce this one into a single block. So let's do that. Uh, so what we have here is uh, what is the formula for the feedback? Forward path gain, forward path gain divided by one plus forward path gain and feedback. Gain. So if it is the minus here, then we will have a positive passing the formula. So forward part is uh, G3 divided by 1 plus G3 H3. So one block is reduced. Now, what should be our next uh, objective? So next, how do we reduce uh, any other further block? So now, the problem here is uh, because of this peak of point here, because of this peak of point here, we cannot apply feedback here. So this one is creating trouble. So if we cannot resolve this uh, block, then it is difficult to resolve the next block. So what we have to do, we have to try to bring this uh, node, the peak of point to this point here. If you can shift it, uh, then it is possible to apply the, the the block diagram reduction formula. So for shifting that one, uh, what we have to do, we have to understand uh, the fact that if we, whatever we apply, we should not uh, change the fundamental formula. Okay, so for that, uh, what, what we can do, uh, our objective is to shift it. So overall transfer function uh, should not be changed. Okay. So if we take uh, the pick off point from this particular point, so it, it is not being multiplied by G2, but if you take it from here, then it is already multiplied by G2. So if you want to shift it here, then it has to be divided because it is now multiplied by G2. So it has to be divided by G2. So this is the thing we have to keep in mind. So uh, let us uh, apply to that sum junction, okay? So now we have G2. Now we have shifted it and we're taking it from here. So it has to be divided by G2. So it can be multiplied by one by G2. Okay, then it can come here. And finally, it will go to the other direction. Okay, so we have uh, the same junction here. Okay, so now from here, uh, we have also the H2. The arrows we have to be careful about, signs. Then we have T1 here. Okay, as well as another summing junction. And then finally, your input OS. 
and also your H1. Now, as you can see, uh, uh, we can easily identify uh, a feedback loop here. We can identify the feedback loop. So this uh, this one is your feedback loop, one feedback loop. Okay, and also uh, we can see that their starting point of this bunch, as well as this bunch starting on the ending point is same. Uh, Okay, so this two can be made parallel. And for your simplicity, uh, this straight line is actually having a gain one. So we can also insert a block here. Okay, so magnitude of one. So basically one plus one by G2 uh, will be uh, the factor here. So mm, can we apply both together? So uh, this one can be given by, uh, this is a parallel, so it'll be additive. So one plus one by G2. So this is one block. Uh, the other one is also already in the outside. So uh, G3 by one plus uh, G3 H3. This is the output. Now we can also apply the feedback loop here, okay. So don't worry about uh, they are being connected together. If you want, you can also isolate them. Okay, so there can be a two different part. So you, you don't have to bother about that too much. So this can be one part, or this can be another part. Okay, so we can also apply the smaller uh, feedback loop. So what you can find here is one, oh, sorry, Forward path gain. Forward path gain is basically G2 by 1 plus uh, G2 H2. So this is another one. Okay. So then uh, from this one, you have uh, another one as well as the gain here G1. Going to this another summing junction that is your H1. Okay. So is it okay? So as you can see now, uh, we have uh, two of them uh, in cascade. So basically this one and this one we multiply together. And after that, you have to apply a, a loop. So for simplicity, you can just erase uh, here. You know, we can just skip one a line. Okay, so you can skip one line, you just make it short, and G1 simply can be multiplied. So now you can apply the feedback formula. So if you apply the feedback formula, then what we are uh, going to find is forward path gain, which is the, this whole thing, and this is your feedback gain. So forward path gain, G1, G2 by one plus G2, H2, forward path gain divided by one plus forward path gain into feedback gain. Okay, so this is your big box. Then you have your, uh, the other smaller two. You can also multiply, it, say, G2, uh, G2 plus one. Then you have uh, G3. One plus uh, G three H three CFS. Okay, so this is your RS. So now you can actually apply a bit of simplification uh, here. Uh, uh, what what we are going to get here is if you multiply together, then actually you can take. Uh, you can make it something like this. Okay, so H1 can be here. And then we can have uh, okay, so one plus G2 H2 plus this one. So uh, 
Okay, so now the simplification simply applies the fact that uh, this one and this one can be canceling each other. What is left here is uh, G1, G2 by one plus uh, G2, H2, plus uh, G1, G2, H1. Okay, so this block multiplied with the next block, which is uh, G2 plus one by G2, multiplied by the next block, which is uh, G3 by one plus G3, H3. Okay, so now as you can see, all three are in the cascade, so they'll be multiplied together, no doubt. So we're gonna have to cancel this one and this one. Uh, so what will be your final uh, single block transfer function uh, is something like this. G1, G3, G1, G3 multiplied by G2 plus one divided by the whole denominator that is uh, one plus uh, G2 H2 plus G1 G2 H1 multiplied by uh, one plus uh, G3 H3. So this is your uh, transfer function relation between the input and the output. So basically, this is your RS and this is your Yes. So things are not that complicated, but uh, it's lengthy. You have to draw the diagrams uh, several times uh, to basically figure out the final result. So this is how you have to do the block diagram reduction. So in general, the examples that we discuss are relatively simple, but whenever we give it in the exam, somehow uh, those are a bit complicated. So you have to practice more so that the procedure becomes uh, easier for you. Okay. So the next example, and I always uh, tell you that uh, the more practice you do, the more easier things will become. Yeah. So if you are a student, if you are actually utilizing your time well, uh, I should give you the reward both in this fall and uh, the after. So one of the condition is uh, I think uh, Allah loves the better, better believers, better believers, skilled believers. So if you have skill and you are using your skill for the betterment of the Islam, that is very unique quality, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala actually loves that. But most of us, we do most of the thing for showing off for our own, own arrogance, ego. So this is uh, detrimental in this world as well as in the hereafter. Okay, let's continue with your example, uh, skill assessment example 5.1. So they have given some real transfer function here in terms of S. So we have uh, something like this, the, mm, some injunction. Then we have two blocks of transfer function, simply S, nothing uh, so complicated. Then we have uh, another one going to one by S. One thing I forgot to tell you is uh, if block diagram reduction can be done in different, uh, different ways. So it is your choice which method you like. So it may not be same for everyone. So, uh, okay, so it is always the end result that counts. It is not how we live that matters. Yeah, at some point it's, it matters how we live, but uh, whether our ending is with shape or not, that is very important. Okay, so uh, I think the way we live, the way we die as well, it follows. And it is always better to remember the death. It helps us to 
focus it help us to to remain safe it help us to remain away from the acts that can actually hurt us i know this morality talks are a bit boring okay let us uh, focus on your uh, example skill assessment example 5.1 so these are the thing that has been provided now you have to reduce it into a single block so evidently what you can see and i i say i, I was saying but i was not following so it is always uh, important to give the signs arrows properly otherwise it can uh, represent something else so you, you have to be careful so now first thing that is uh, evident is this two are in cascade they can be multiplied together after multiplying that uh, this part and this part is actually um, and uh, the starting and ending is in same so basically they are uh, parallel to each other so what you can do is we can just make them together so s and s multiplied with s square then plus uh, S is related back no one by S. So in a single line, we can uh, do the both the task. Okay, so after that, what we have is uh, one by S. And we have a summing junction here. Okay, so this is how it looks now. Now, next thing is also not that complicated, uh, 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 but now, as you can see, we cannot apply anything else because of the fact that uh, we have this branch. Okay, so we have this branch so because of which it is uh, difficult to uh, apply yeah, anything else. So somehow what we have to try to do is we have to try to shift this one. Any, uh, any direction you can shift, uh, either towards uh, this side or towards that side. So it's convenient to shift it there in that side. Okay. So let us try to do that. So if you try to shift it to the other side, then what is the thing that is the additional? is multiplied by this block. So once you are taking the pick off from here, it will not be multiplied by this one. But if you take it from the other side here, then uh, it will be multiplied uh, by this one by S, which is not a, a desired feature. So what do you have to do? You have to divide it by this. So one by one by S, eventually it will be multiplied by S. So let's try to do that. So what we are having, we can also multiply here, s cube uh, plus one by s, okay? So we just multiply that one. Then one by s is here. Now we're taking the reference from the other side. So we have the sum junction here. So it will be made by one by one by s, so basically s coming here, one of them going here, and the other one s is, uh, and from the other side. So this is your uh, CS and this is your RS. Okay, so sign, sign, sign. Very careful about sign. Now, what can you see here is now this is the starting point of this part as well as this part, and they're going to the same sound direction. So basically, this top part and the bottom part, they're actually parallel to each other. So if they are parallel to each other, what can we do? We can simply add them together. So what, and uh, also, and don't forget that this coin cascade now, so they can also be multiplied together. So two things we're doing, we're adding this one and this one because they are parallel, and uh, we're just multiplying this two because they're in the cascade form. So what you are going to get here is this Q plus one by S square. Okay, so then we have one feedback, so S plus S twice S in the summation. 
So Clysis. This is your CS and this is your RS plus minus arrows. Okay, so now uh, simple feedback, negative feedback. So what we are doing here is SQ plus one by S square divided by, uh, this is true forward per gain, uh, one plus forward per gain uh, into feedback in places. So this should be your uh, transfer function. So now we can actually cancel S and S squared. So, but it, it is a no avail because of the fact in the in, in, uh, in the numerator you also have one by S squared. So we keep it that way. So we just multiply. So what we are going to get is S cube plus one by S squared divided by uh, S squared plus uh, S cube plus one into twice S by S squared. So S squared getting canceled out. Now finally, what we are left with is uh, S cube plus one divided by, now you can multiply two S to the power four, two S to the power four plus S squared plus two S. So, this is your RS, uh, CS by RS, or equivalent transfer function, GFS. Okay, so this is how you have to uh, find, in case of the real uh, quantities, in the corresponding function. Now let us uh, take some uh, additional rules uh, from uh, another book. I think this is uh, control system engineering. And I think the author is the book sheet, Indian book. But uh, sometimes we actually uh, we try to avoid the Indian books uh, because of the fact that standard textbooks uh, book are uh, in the American or uh, Canada, something like that. Uh, so from those uh, countries, but England maybe. But uh, the fact is that uh, the level of the mathematics uh, that we know uh, actually uh, needs more explanation uh, than those book or those standard books. Uh, and those are actually available in some of the Indian books. I'm not suggesting all of them, but some of them are actually written in a more elaborate way. So let us try to introduce some of the rules uh, that is given in that book. So uh, first one, I think the associative rule of something like this, associative, associative for, not necessarily it is uh, necessary to, uh, it is not necessary to remember the name of the rule, but uh, the property, if you can recall, that should be enough. So if you have two summing junction, okay, and they are connected directly, and you have two quantities, say R2, uh, R1 here, R2 and plus, minus, plus, plus, uh, R3, so if you have two summing junction together, uh, the result that you're going to get here uh, is uh, R1 minus R2. And eventually C uh, S you're going to get is R1 minus R2 plus uh, R3. Okay, so the rule this one says is if you alter these summing junctions, if there is nothing in between, so uh, it will be the same result. So basically, if you find uh, this one, so let's say this is your R3 now, with plus uh, R1, and then your R2 here with the minus, then it should be the same C of S. So what will be the value here? The value here is R1 plus R3, and here is uh, R1 plus R3 minus which is eventually the same as this one. So 
think this can be applied. You can alter the order of your uh, summing result if there is nothing in between. But if there is something in between, like uh, uh, maybe transfer function is in between the two junction, uh, in that case, it is not applicable. Is it okay? Why not applicable? You just apply the map, you are going to get it by yourself. Say this is G, this is your minus plus, same, same thing, uh, plus, minus, then you have R3. So what we are going to get here is R1 minus R2 will be multiplied by G. Okay, so here you have uh, R1 minus R2, which will be multiplied by G, then you're going to get it here. Then from that one, you have to add R3. So what we are going to get as CS is R1 minus R2 into G plus R2. Now, if you try to alter uh, the summing junction uh, by keeping uh, the box, the transfer fun uh, function or the box in between, then you will have uh, some result that is will not be identical. Okay, so say this is your R1, now this is your R2 plus, plus, and then your minus R2, this is your G. Now, CS that you're going to get is basically R1 plus R3 will be multiplied by G, then minus R2. So this two are not equal. So we cannot. Uh, alter the summing junctions if they are not directly connected together. So this is your first rule. The second uh, additional rule that we are going to see is uh, if you have some pick off point or summing junction in between the box uh, blocks, in that case, they cannot be considered as a series. So, so it is also common sense, but still this, uh, so now we can say that G1, G2, G3, they are uh, in cascade. But as soon as you have a pickoff point uh, from any one of them, or maybe a summing junction, so we cannot say that they are in series anymore. So this is more or less common sense. And under this circumstance, I say we just have a summing junction. So either you have to shift the summing junction to uh, this side or shift it to this side and then we can say that the box uh, the box are actually in series okay so this is also not uh, that uh, difficult to understand so another uh, one you can uh, uh, you have maybe in the parallel as well similar thing can happen so say in the parallel one we have something like this So two box maybe, uh, G1, G2, they're here. Now, it seems now they're uh, parallel to each other. But soon you have a peak of points, uh, one point coming out of from there. So now they cannot be said parallel. In that case, what you have to do, you have to shift it uh, maybe in this side, or you can shift this one maybe in the other side. But uh, taking it to the other side of the sun junction is a bit complicated. So, this one is uh, better uh, uh, to take it through uh, before the G2 box. Okay, so this is uh, what uh, we can do. Basically, this is what you have to do uh, is to identify the forms, familiar forms, and then you, you can actually apply the formula. Okay, next one is uh, in the last class we have seen how can you can shift the blocks. So if you want to see the mathematical way of doing that, like say shifting the summing junction behind uh, before a block. So you have something like this, say one block that is G, then we have a summing junction. This is your uh, result that is uh, oh, okay, so let me complete it and write it. So why? Okay, so we have something like this R. So R will be multiplied with G. Uh, after that, uh, we are going to get here is RG. 
then we have to add it to y. So rg plus y is on. Right. Now, what they are asking us uh, to bring this summing junction before the block. So we have to bring the summing, the shift the summing junction here. So say we are shifting the summing junction before. So what we are going to get. So we'll just bring it uh, to the front first, then see what modifications we have to do. We have the block to add G. Okay, so now we, we say that we have, we are having X here. Okay, so this is R. So basically now what we are going to have as a CS is uh, R plus X will be added together. R plus X will be added together. Then it will be multiplied by G. So what we are going to get is R of g plus x g but we know that we need y there so uh, y should be equal to x uh, g so x can be replaced by x can be replaced by y by g so what does it mean we have to divide this one by g one by g then we can say this we now we have y there is it okay so mathematically this is how you can say y actually we are dividing it by one by g so if you it is common sense though so only r is multiplied so if you take it in the other side both of them will be actually multiplied by g so this one has to be divided by one by g but mathematically this is how you can prove that okay so we are giving you another perspective to think okay, so mathematically how can you do that so similar thing can also be done uh, for uh, block like uh, if you want to have your summing junction taken to the other side. So you have the summing junction here. Now when you want to take it, you have a block here. Okay, so okay, so two of them are added together. So they are plus y. Then it is multiplied with G, then we have your C of S, which is uh, R plus Y into G. Now, if you want to take your summing junction after the block, you want to bring it here, shift the summing junction. Uh, in that case, what do you have to do? So, common sense, uh, in, in both of them is multiplied. So, uh, you have to multiply both of them with G. Okay, so simple. Both of them with G, that will give you the same result. I do not tell you, this. but also you can apply those mathematical analogies, analogies so that it gives the mathematical insight how we are actually doing that. Okay, so this is your CS, which is remaining eventually the same. So RG plus Y uh, G. Okay. Next thing uh, that we have to uh, do is similar thing uh, regarding your uh, pick of points, shifting the pick of points before and after a block. So if you have a block G, then you have a pick of point here, Y. Okay, so uh, this is your input. So you have uh, output equal to basically uh, RG and also the peak of point value is also same with RG. Now what uh, they're trying, uh, they're asking you to do is you have to shift that peak of point there. Okay, so if you try to shift it there, then uh, what should, what adjustment that you should do? So basically you have, you can change the parameters in the output side as well, you have to have this thing. So now, so uh, we have the block here. Now we're taking it from here. So if you take it from here, now Y is becoming actually R, but this is not what we want. We have to have RG. So simple logic, we have to have a G here. Okay, then uh, it is remaining same RG, and then here is the same analogy. 
same thing if you uh, if you want to shift to to the other side then what we are going to do say we have a pick off point here now before the block we have a pick off point which is y equal to r and now you have g then you have your output status equal to rg now uh, what they are asking you to do is uh, they are asking you to take it to the other side okay so now simply take it to the other side then see what are the adjustment that we have to do okay so we take it to the other side now uh, uh, what we are taking is uh, cs is not really changing i am being unchanged so uh, now what you have y equal to basically rg this is what we don't want but we, what we need is uh, only r so it has to be divided by g so we can multiply here by one by g so it's a remaining same. So these are uh, some simplifying analog analogies uh, that will help you to actually implement this uh, block diagram. Now comes two critical rule. Uh, uh, these are uh, most important for you to recall. So shifting the peak of point after a sum injunction and before a sum injunction. So we have say. A, a, some injunction here. Okay, then we have a pick off point here. So basically, this is your R. So your pick off point, say this is uh, Y equal to R. Okay, and then we are use adding X here. So let's say this is plus, and this is also plus. Okay, so it can be negative as well, but uh, just assume this is plus. So what we are going to see at the output CS, uh, so this is equal to this is R plus X. Is it okay? Now, what we have to do is we have to shift this pick of point after the sum injunction. But we have to keep the value to R. So let us try to do that. What happens? Let's find out. So if we uh, take it, uh, keep the sum injunction, that we take it. Uh, this is your x, this is your r plus plus. Now if you take it from here, the pick of point, and so you are taking the output. So what is our output C of S is basically R plus X. Okay. So whatever you are taking here is basically R plus. Uh, what value you are taking, say Z you are taking, which is R plus X. But what you should have been taking is only R. So you have to subtract the X. So that is why what you have to do is Okay, so for that thing, what you have to do, you have to bring another sum injunction here. Okay, and then uh, uh, this is uh, Z equal to R plus X. Now, and now uh, using that sum injunction, actually, we can, we can subtract the value of, we can subtract the value of X. Okay, so we can take uh, the X here and then subtract, this is plus, so R plus X minus X. So now you can take this one as a curve value. So this is your Y, which is basically now becoming R. So that is why if you want to shift a pick off point after a sum injunction, it is difficult, it is complicated. And because of which, you have to bring another sum injunction, then you have to alter, you have to alter the transfer function so that it, it keeps the same value. Okay, so this is one of the critical rule. Same thing applies uh, if you try to take the sum injunction from after the, uh, after, uh, sorry, if you want to take the pickup point from after the sum injunction to before the sum injunction, then uh, what will happen? So this is uh, another critical thing. 
So P T K O P two is uh, basically if you have the sum junction already, then you're taking some values here. Okay, so I'll say this is your R, this is your X, now you're taking Y, Y is basically R plus X. Now what the, what we have to do for to bring some uh, family group four? So we have to bring our pick of point before the sum injunction. So this is what we pass, so your CFS uh, becoming R plus X. Okay, now, I think it will, be, it will be helpful if we take the negative sum. So don't worry, we can take both. So say we are taking a negative sum here. So our response uh, here, uh, minus x, minus x. Okay, so uh, how can we take it to the other side? So let us uh, bring it to the other side and see what are the consequences and what are the adjustments that we have to do. So this is uh, your R. You have the sum function. This is your X plus minus, and you have your output, output to remain the same. R minus X. Now, if you take it from here, what you are taking is only R. So Z, Z is only R. But what you need is R minus X. So we have to do one sum function here. R is already here, additive. Then you have to subtract X. Now, if you take it from here, then Y will be equal to R minus X. Is it okay? So this is how, uh, this is other critical rule. So basically moving the peak of point uh, from one side to the other side of the sum injunction is one of the critical rule that we sometimes have to apply. So now let us uh, look at few examples of uh, this particular book. Uh, so example, the, their chapter is also five, so I can tell you like point one of uh, Bakshi book. So, Okay, so this is uh, the diagram. So this is your RS plus minus plus minus. And the arrows, I think, they are okay. So now, uh, how can we uh, reduce this block? So, first thing that we have to identify, saying the thing is whether there is a family of form. So we can easily see the few family of forms available. So, number one is this. Cascade multiply number two is uh, this two. These two are actually uh, parallel, so their starting point and ending point is same. 
So you can easily uh, apply this uh, formula here. So basically G1, G2 multiplied to G1 and G4 is multiplied together. Then we have a feedback, a negative feedback with H1. Okay, and these two will be added together. So this is your G2 plus G3. And then it is going to your output. Then from output, we'll have another feedback. So uh, this is your RS uh, with the feedback rate H2. Okay. So uh, should I solve it? I don't think. I think you can do it by yourself. Next thing that you have to apply is uh, the feedback loop here. Oh, so once you apply the feedback loop, this whole block will be converted to one. So uh, forward part gain is one, G1, G4, and feedback gain is H1. So you can simply write it here. I don't, want, I don't want to spend more time on the easier example. So let me, let me make it quicker. So divide by one forward path gain, then forward path gain into feedback gain. So now these two are uh, in the cascade form. So you can do the multiplication together. So now it can be made a single block. So make it uh, a single block. So that is uh, G2 plus uh, G3. Okay, so next thing left is uh, a simple uh, feedback part. So I think it will be able to do that. So this is your example 5.1 of your uh, Bakshi book. Now go for the example 5.2. So let's go 5.2. So uh, let us again try to, uh, let me just draw the diagram, then I'll give you the hint how to do it because it is also easier. Okay, so uh, there is a feedback from the output to this branch, unity feedback. And uh, there is another feedback from here to here. Which one? Okay, so uh, this is the thing plus, plus, minus, minus, minus. RS yes. So one thing is evident is uh, this block here. So this block in here is uh, the total feedback. Okay, and it, it has no difficulty. So we can easily apply the feedback here. So if you now apply the feedback, uh, then what you can find here is let me again uh, erase it so that I can do it easily. Also, this is G2 and H2. Okay, so now uh, the formula for the feedback is forward by gain, that is G2, by one plus uh, G2 H2. Okay. Now, next thing, what we should do, 
Next thing is uh, we cannot apply anything because of uh, this block here, as well as this peak of point here. So either one, either one of them has to be changed. So uh, the better one is uh, to shift this one. So this will be easier to shift the pick of point to bring it here. Okay, so if we have to bring it there, uh, this pick of point. So what are the changes that we are going to see? If you take it from here, from this point, then actually it is not multiplied by this block. But if you take it from that, so this point, so this will be multiplied. So you actually have to divide it by that, one, nothing else. So we can uh, simply do that. Okay, so uh, simply take it from here, from this side. With the multiplication, uh, basically dividing that one. So dividing is just, multiplying by the inverse of that one. So one plus G2 H2 divided by G2. So this should be a case. Now, uh, what, what is next? Definitely we can already guess that this two are in cascade. So they has to be multiplied together. This two in cascade, they has to be multiplied together. So let us uh, try to uh, make it. G1, G2 by 1 plus G2 H2. Okay, so, and also another thing I think you already know that we can add the sum in conjunction as well. So just make it simple and we'll make it one sum in junction. So this is coming here. And this is coming here. So it will be, if you multiply, then it will be H1 multiplied by 1 plus uh, G2 H2 by G2. Okay, so this is your CFS. And this is your RFS plus minus minus. So what you can see, there's this, uh, this starting point and the ending point is same. So this bunch and this bunch is basically parallel together. So you can add them and you can apply. Uh, after that, you can uh, do the feedback analysis. This is one thing you can do. Other thing, you know, as I already said, that you can have your different way of doing it. So you can apply feedback with this one only. Then after you can apply feedback with this one. So this, this is also you can do. So it's up to you which which method you go for. So, but this is the way to do the thing. Now go for the next example, example uh, 5.3. Example five. Okay, I think example five point three. You can do it by yourself. It's not that complicated. I think I better uh, go with more complicated problem. That is five point four. Yeah. So let's uh, draw the diagram first and see uh, what is the difficulty of this one.
Okay, so this is your RS uh, feedback going here. Negative feedback, and then one feedback going here. Negative feedback, the other feedback is going here. Negative feedback. So this is the diagram. Okay, so a lot of twisting is there, but Okay, so if your understanding is clear, then it should not be a very a difficult idea. What we can see here is that uh, this bunch, uh, this summing junction is actually, uh, this summing junction is only has a feedback from H1. What we can see is that this summing junction has a feedback from multiplication of H1 and H2. Okay, and this third one is having a, uh, and this this one has a multiplication of H1, H2, and H3. Uh, all the three uh, block diagrams is actually feeding back to that channel. So if you can just understand this idea, then you can easily separate them and then it should not be that complicated. So what you can do very quickly is that G1 going through the sun junction to uh, G2, and going to another sign motion, going to G3. And then this is your final output. So from this one to this one, two of the things is going. That is H1 and H2. Maybe the order you can uh, change this to H1. Okay, so, and what about uh, the second one? Second one, only H1. So you can take it from here. Okay. And the final one, which is having all three, so maybe H3, uh, then H2, then you have H1. Okay, so this is same as this diagram. So they just try to make it look complicated, but essentially it is not that complicated is it okay so uh, you can simply uh, multiply this branch h1 and put it here as well as here okay similarly these two you can put it uh, put it here and put it here so essentially h1 is extremely here H2H, H1 is in here and the only H1 is this here. So multiplying inside the peak of points uh, should give you this uh, block diagram, understanding of this block. So it's, uh, it's not that complicated. So what do you have to do after rearranging? Very simple, apply feedback here, after solving, apply feedback here, and finally apply feedback on the larger one. So three feedback will give you the equivalent model. So understanding the diagram was actually the critical part here. So if you got it, then it should not be that difficult. So try to practice that one. Final one, final one is the most difficult one. I, I have ever encountered. So example of 5.5. Let's uh, see how complicated that one is. Okay, so. We have something like this. Okay, so this is your RS. Then from after the G1, there is another block G3 that goes to this one with the plus sign, as well as this one is plus. And then you have uh, from the output side, you have one coming here. So feedback H2 from output side. And one branch from here uh, having H1. 
and that is going to this one. So this is plus minus, this is also plus minus. Now this particular example uh, is, is a bit complicated one. Uh, now let us try to find any familiar term whatsoever is present in this one. So definitely there is no cascade. There is no feedback because of the presence of the junctions, some junctions and the peak of points in between. So nothing can be done. Nothing, absolutely nothing can be done in this particular example. So definitely we have to apply those critical rules to start solving it. So this branch is creating trouble. So let us try to bring it here, but in step. So we have to eventually bring it here, but we have to do it in step. So, so that the uh, transport function it doesn't change that much. Okay, so what we'll do, uh, the first step is uh, basically in the first step, we'll try to shift it to here. Then in the second step, we'll try to do it. So if you try to bring it here, uh, then actually, we, if you take it from here, it is already multiplied by G2. But if you take it from here, then it will not be multiplied by G2. So you have to manually multiply it by G2. Okay. So let us do that to bring it from here, careful. Okay. And we manually multiply it by G2. So, Okay, so multiply with uh, G2. And then I like, try to use uh, that one. Shift it already. Okay, what we have to do next is uh, we have to shift it to here. We need to shift. It's still, uh, uh, as you can see, even if we shift it, uh, still we don't have any familiar form. So we have to try to shift it here. Then we have to check whether any familiar form is available. Or not. So in the second step, we're trying to shift it here. And actually, you can multiply these two. Now these two are actually in cascade. So you can multiply these two. So let's uh, multiply uh, H1, G2. So H1, G2. H1, G2. Now we we'll take it from, we we'll try to take it from here. So if you try to take it from here, then what will be missing that we have to adjust. So. If we take it from here, that means we are adding this bunch and we are subtracting this bunch. But if you take it from here, only the additional part is available, the subtraction is not available. So that is why what we have to do, we have to have a summing junction here. So adding part is already here. Now we have to have the subtracting part. Okay. So if you have the subtraction, but now it is remaining same. Is it okay? Slightly complicated, but if you think it uh, favorably, then this is what will be the consequence. So we have applied two shifts uh, still. It's complicated. It's difficult to understand what is happening. Okay, so next thing is uh, still most of the thing is not applicable. So next thing that we can do is basically, we can bring this component, uh, we can bring this component to the other 
uh, this one can be taken here as well as here, shifting the block because uh, both of them after addition will be multiplied by this one. So we can bring the block there. So basically you can shift this sum and then from somewhere closer here. So let us uh, try to do that. RS goes uh, there with G1. Okay, so now uh, we have another sum junction maybe somewhere here. Okay, so or uh, we can keep it uh, closer to that side as well. Okay, so it's a uh, sum junction is here. Okay, so from here uh, we are multiplying with uh, H1 G2, H1 G2. Then it is added, and then it, will, it is H1 G2, H1 G2, and then it is sucked. Okay, then finally you have your uh, this sum junction, and from this one, your G3 is going. Uh, to the next sum junction, which is after G2. Okay. Now you have R2. Okay, so now uh, your H2, which was coming from the output side, it was one of it, one of uh, the branches going in that direction, and the other branch was actually going in that direction with the negative sign. Okay, so anything else possible? Still, things are not that easy. Okay, so next thing that we can do here is basically we can also shift uh, this H uh, to put it here. In both the branches, it can multiply by H. So you can uh, make one H here, H2 and the other H2 here. Okay, pushing the uh, uh, H2 block uh, to the peak of points. So uh, what we are going to get here is from here, one uh, say, it's two here, and the other one say going here. It's two. Then you also have your H one G two. Okay, and then you have your summing junction that one, and it has H uh, one G two. Okay. So finally, uh, this one is. Uh, it will be easier to top. Okay, so, okay, so then you have your G1 here, then another sum junction. So, from the sum junction, you have this one, then you have RS, and then you have uh, your uh, G2, as well as don't forget about G3. Okay, so those are going to um, the next sum junction. And this is your stress. Now, this is feedback. Uh, so, what you can do is basically, uh, as you can see now, Okay, don't get confused about the signs. Uh, this was plus, this was minus, this is plus, this is minus. Okay, so this is definitely, uh, definitely we can multiply these two. Okay, and also we can bring this junction to there. Okay, so we can have two separate junctions. 
Um, so what we can do simply is uh, by erasing it from it from here, we can directly connect it to the source uh, with the string. So now it's coming closer to a common form and also this in cascade. So they can also be uh, replaced with H1, H2, and G2. So this can be maybe one box. So H1, H2, G2. Is it okay? So next thing is, uh, as you know, that this block and this block can be, uh, these two sum injunction can be added together. Okay. So we can merge those two together. Okay. So if you merge those two, uh, you always have to keep in the sign. Okay. So sign has to be uh, right, otherwise it will be difficult to find out so the correct transformation. So RS is the same, so plus, and this one is having plus, so plus minus will be minus, minus minus will be plus. So one can be like this, G2, G1, uh, sorry, H1, G2. That will be going with your uh, G1 directly. The other one, uh, the sign of this one is plus, minus is minus, and the other one is minus minus is plus. So that will be your uh, G1, H1, H2, and G2. Okay, so and you have a sum junction here, and then you have G2. You have another sum junction, and from here, you have uh, G3 is. Uh, Creating the only disturbance now. So I will have to somehow move the G2. I uh, sorry, G3. Is it okay? So this is how it looks now. So where the G3 can go? So we can actually bring the G3 from uh, this sum invention. That one is it okay? So, if you bring it there, uh, then what what ad adjustments that you have to do is uh, basically uh, if we bring it here, then it will be multiplied by G2, but it should not be multiplied by G2, isn't it? Uh, so, if you take if you add it here. Then G2 is only going, but if you add it to the previous sum invention, then it will be also multiplied by G2. So it has to be divided by G2. So it's not that difficult. Okay, so what we are going to have uh, now is the sum injunction is here, then we have G1, then the feedback goes with uh, H1, G2, goes here. Then the other one uh, going from here with the same sum injunction. Okay, so uh, for, I forgot to put the transfer function there. So this is the G3 by G2. Then it goes to G2. If you want, you can uh, split that uh, sum injunction to two, but if, if you also, if you also can keep as it is, so G2, G2, then you have H2. Okay, so now this is how it looks. And finally, I think we want feedback from all the way from the output to the input. So this is negative, this is positive, positive, RS, plus, plus, and this is your H1, H2, G2.
Okay, so now things are almost done. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is a magnitude one, you don't have to forget, you, 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 you have to remember it. So G2, G3, G3 by G2 plus one. So this for uh, parallel. So this one and this part and this part is parallel. This is feedback, this is feedback. So three things can be applied together. So what we will have is forward part then, for forward part then feedback. So uh, G1 by four, one by forward, uh, forward part gain plus one plus forward part gain into feedback gain. So this is first block. Second block is uh, parallel, so G3 by G2 plus one. Then the third block is another feedback that is G2 by one plus G2 H2. Then finally, uh, uh, you have your, sorry, uh, we have a multiplication block here, uh, some invention here, final sum invention H1. H2, G2. And also, this is positive feedback coming all the way from the output. Is it okay? So, uh, simple, simple, very simple now. Uh, this three block, uh, you have to multiply this three cascade. Okay. And then you just have to apply the feedback. So, this is the most critical one. I have uh, encountered with. Uh, I'm also sorry that this topic also took uh, more than one, one hour and 20 minutes. So, but the block diagram reduction more or less will be based on the things that we have discussed. So, uh, see you in the next class, inshallah.